Hi there, and welcome to Insomnia Insight number 342, in which we'll talk about something really, really important. When you attribute a night of good sleep to your willingness to have insomnia, yes, you heard that right, your willingness to have insomnia, you are on the path to sleeping well forever. I think this is actually really important, so I'm really happy to share this with you. Uh, let's just jump right into it and, and talk about this. So I want to start here. Guess which of these two fictional characters sleeps the best. We're going to talk about Kim and Connie before we go to those two things you should do to, to really do the right attribution here and sleep really good. So let's talk about Kim and Connie. So Kim is, is the first one we'll talk about. And Kim, for her, sleeping one minute less than a certain amount is completely unacceptable. That just cannot happen. Kim is not okay with that. And Kim is trying to do everything she can, think of anything she can to make sure she doesn't lose one single minute of sleep. And then we have Connie. Connie, on the other hand, is, is okay. If she doesn't sleep that much, that is fine with her. That's acceptable. So who do you think sleeps the best? Is it going to be Kim or Connie? Pretty easy, easy to answer. I bet it is, of course, Connie, because Connie is not pressured at all to sleep. Connie, if Connie doesn't sleep that much, that's okay. Connie has no pressure, sleeps okay. Kim, on the other hand, is super pressured to sleep, uh, so therefore, Kim will not sleep better. Now, uh, you may think at this point, okay, I want to be more like Connie. How can I get there? Well, it may not be as hard as you think because a lot of times you are like Connie. And we'll get there in a second. But first, uh, out of the two things, I want to start with this, this one. When you have a night when you sleep little, and this is where we do the attributions, attribute it to something obvious, okay? I didn't sleep that much because I was anxious. And, and you don't have to, you know, uh, spend more time on that. You know, think about why was I anxious? What should I do to be like Just for the purpose of this class here, just attribute to something obvious. I was anxious, that's why I didn't sleep much. And the, the beauty of that is that you don't have to go down the rabbit hole and figure out why you didn't sleep much. Maybe you were anxious, maybe this happened, something obvious happened, and that's it. Now here comes the really important one. When you sleep well, attribute this to being more okay with not sleeping. Attribute this to being more like Connie. I think this is so important because no matter how much trouble sleeping you you have, you probably here and there have a night where you sleep, if not great, at least a little bit better. And guess what? That time you slept good or a little better, it was because you were more like Connie. This is the reason. And a lot of you probably at this point will say, no, there's more to it than that. Sometimes I sleep better simply because I was really exhausted, that's why I slept well. Or I took that medication, that's why I slept well. Or for some other reason. But this is not the case. And I, and I tell you this because if you think this, I'm only sleeping when I'm exhausted or I'm going to take meds, consider this. If somebody is super worried, in other words, if somebody's like, I cannot lose a second of sleep, that's unacceptable, I can't lose sleep like I was. Somebody is really, really and not accepting at all of, of losing any sleep, then that person will not sleep even if they're exhausted or taking medications because that pressure again will be so high that yes, if you're exhausted, you may sleep a little more. You take medications, you may sleep a little, but sleeping well, that will not happen unless you are like Connie to some degree. So I think it is very true to say that good sleep always is thanks to you being more like Connie. I definitely believe this is true. And also, when you go in this direction of always crediting better sleep, good sleep, towards being more okay with being awake, then you are set because you see exactly where you should be going. You see that if I become more and more willing, which I have been, and, and now, again, if you've just slept better this one night or you slept good one night, you have been like Connie and you can do it again. And so again, if you attribute everything this way, you see the path forward very, very clearly. So 
give credit where it is due and you will sleep really well forever. You will not struggle with sleep when you do this. I hope you found this very, very helpful. Uh, as always, when you have a question you know, about this or anything else, and if you want to contribute to an open class episode, send that one to, to this email. Any comments, very, very appreciated. Please post them here. And uh, 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 soon enough, we will have our, our course here for anyone that wants a little bit more uh, than is available for, for everyone in this YouTube channel. We'll have, within the Sleep Coach School, our a membership program. And uh, for those of you who prefer text-based coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching by text, we always also have Bedtime, our partner Bedtime, where I coach, is also available. So you're welcome there too. So again, thanks so much for tuning in. And I look forward to having you back real soon. Until then, 